Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or professional level. So won't you stay tuned? We all have something in common, and it doesn't matter who you are or what you are. And it's not really what I call a compliment. It's called stress. How do we minimize our daily stress that we are under? With me is Dr. Roberta Lee, who wrote a book called The Super Stress Solution. And I would like to welcome Dr. Lee. It's great to be here. I'm so glad to have you here. How did you get involved in writing a book on stress? I have been taking care of patients for over 25 years, and I've noticed in the last 10 years that the types of patients that are coming to see me has changed. I'm seeing younger and younger people who are struggling from things that I usually don't see until people reach the latter decades of their lives. I'm speaking about trouble sleeping, um, not having enough energy, having brain fog, um, all sorts of things. So I realized that I was dealing with something very different, something that I call super stress. We all know what stress is. It's a fight or flight reaction when we sense danger. What super stress is, is layers and layers of stress fueled by the frenetic pace of our lives. And the last thing that really drives it is this overconnection with Blackberries, computers, cell phones, and Game Boys. What it does is it makes us live a life that really doesn't have any downtime and it does something to our nervous system. It actually overloads our nervous system with stress to the point that we can't access the normal calm that we, know, that we have in our bodies. And so we begin to manifest physical signs of stress, difficulty sleeping, loss in sex drive, brain fog, all those types of things. Or we feel like anxious is the new normal. That's what super stress is. On the Women's Connection, we've posted your 50 questions, of, well, a mini questionnaire on if you're stressed out. But going further, what additional things do we have playing on our bodies that manifest because we are so stressed? What happens to our physiology? Well, when we have a stress response, the central command center of the brain called the limbic system sends signals to the adrenal glands. And what comes from that is that epinephrine, norepinephrine, and cortisol go surging through the body. Now these, these compounds specifically drive energy to maximize fight or flight. That means that blood gets shunted to the muscles that help us run away. Um, our brain gets more blood circulation, so we become hyperacute. Our eyesight gets better, our hearing gets better, our mental alertness gets heightened. But the problem is this response was meant evolutionarily to shut down after an hour or two. With super stress conditions, we're catalyzing the stress response over and over throughout the day. And week after week, year after year, the body starts to lose certain functions that have been cut off during the stress response. In other words, when we're in fight or flight, our digestion gets shut off our immune system eventually wears down. And that's not great for us. If we had the regular stress, the body would rebalance. But under super stress, the body can't rebalance without uh, reaching for some other means to do it. In other words, a person who's super stressed who had trouble sleeping would look for medication instead of being able to access that on their own. So the body's stuck on overdrive. Men and women react to stress differently. How so? Anatomy is different between genders. If you look at the brain nervous connection, you'll see that in the prefrontal cortex, that's right where we have uh, a sense of our, our surroundings, women actually are more aware of their body sensations when they have stress. So if I was to give equal amounts of stress to a woman and a man, 
the woman would actually feel the stress much more than the man, even though the stress presented would be about the same amount. Experts think that this is an evolutionary strategy for caretakers of the young. If we're hyper alert to the fact that we're in a dangerous situation, we'll be much more successful in caring for the young. Whereas if we're going to battle, the last thing we want to do is feel stress. We want to have stress hardiness to tough it out, if you will. You also say in your book that stress is linked to violence. How so? Well, I tend to think of super stress as a saturation of the stress response in the body so the body can't rebalance. Violence is really one of many examples of the body not being able to blow off steam, if you will. So what happens is that that stressed individual channels that energy into anger, into irritability, into um, anxiety, or any number of things. Some people get depressed instead of getting violent. It's just a sign that you're not being able to rebalance yourself and access calm. What are some good stress buster exercises that you can do either in the office or at home to really chill out, especially since you say, and it's really true, we do leave such a frenetic lifestyle. We need that moment of calm. How do we get it? Well, the first thing I'd like people to know is when they're under chronic stress, in order to have a super stress solution, you don't have to be in bliss 24-7. All you need to do is bring in a moment of calm for five or 10 minutes on a daily basis. What this does is it engages the memory of the body to naturally access relaxation again. If you're constantly accessing the, the stress response, what happens is that ability to access the calm atrophies. It's like a muscle, you have to use it. So what I like to suggest to people is that they can use something that they do every day, which is breathe. When you take a deep, relaxing breath, you're accessing the vagus nerve, which is one of the biggest nerves that enhances the relaxation response. My favorite breath exercise, which I'm gonna show you now, is the four or five breath. And basically, it's breathing in through the nostrils to a count of four. I'm blowing out through your mouth to a count of five. Let's try that one more time. Now, if you do four of those breaths in the morning and in the evening, what you're basically doing is reintroducing that memory in your body of, this, of the relaxation response. And believe it or not, if you st start doing this day after day, you'll have a different response to stress. You'll be more stress resilient. You won't be so reactive. Just one change every day is really the nuts and bolts of the super stress solution. How many times did you say again to do the relaxation meditation? respond with the breathing exercise again? Research has shown that we need as little as 10 to 12 minutes of a relaxation response to begin to reset the nervous system. And whenever we try to make new habits, we need about two weeks of consistently engaging that habit to make it part of our routine. So you see, it doesn't really take that much to create a positive change. You talk about meditation. I have tried meditation umpteen times. Is there a secret to doing meditation? Well, I think it's always helpful to remember that you need to pick something when you're trying to set a new habit to relax and access your calm that you like. Now, some people really take like a duck to water doing meditation. Other people need something that engages the body, like yoga or tai chi. So if you try meditation and it doesn't seem to fit, I would suggest finding something more physically engaging. That having been said, sometimes people think when they're paying attention to their breath and, and meditating that they shouldn't have any thoughts. And I like to suggest to people that if they're really slowing down, what happens as they're observing their thoughts is that it, it almost feels like your mind is busier. It's kind of like being on a train. When you're on the train, it seems like things are going kind of slow, but when you're on the platform watching the train go by, the train seems to be going really quickly. And that's how it is when you're meditating. All you're trying to do when you're meditating, whether you use a breath or have a mantra, 
is disengage from reacting to the busyness of your thoughts. It sounds very funny, but what happens is you begin to become aware of the moment. And it's different because your awareness is now identified with that inner calm that we all have. It sounds like something that I'm going to give it a try again on this meditation because I know when I go exercise and walk down by the Esplanade on the Hudson River, I'm really getting into relaxation and it works for me. But I also find that people do a lot of affirmations. Is there something special in an affirmation that we should do? I love affirmations. Affirmations, those are phrases that engage us into positive thinking really capitalize on the power of the subconscious. Now this sounds really far out, but the reality is that even Olympic athletes use something akin to affirmations to increase their efficiency in doing whatever they need to do. And we can do this in our daily lives as well. If we're stressed and we want to access calm, we can, we can invent new phrases that we like or that we've come across in any readings that really make us focus and engage our subconscious in the possibility of accessing calm. Do you have a favorite affirmation that you say? Well, there's so many, but um, I, I love, I have unlimited calm and peace that I can share with people and myself throughout the day. That is a great phrase. You also talk about Ayurvedic, am I pronouncing it correctly, in healing as far as you had a foot massage that sounded very interesting to do. But Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic also deals with herbs in a different way of healing yourself. How did you get involved with this? I am an integrative medicine doctor and an internist by training. And part of that approach is engaging the whole person and engaging indigenous systems, healing systems, in part of the equation of gaining control over your health. Ayurveda is one of those beautiful ancient traditions that was born in India, which uses lifestyle modification, diet, exercise, and states of mind to engage a healthy outcome. Now in this regard, we're talking about beating stress. When people are super stressed, what happens to them is they become focused in the future and they lose body awareness. So I picked something that I think is really soothing, like a foot massage, to use as something as a self-aid to engage calm. One of the most effective ways to gain calm is to use all of your senses to recruit calm. So if you're touching your foot at special points and using a favorite oil that has a wonderful scent, with, a, with an essential oil like lavender, you're using two or three senses in the body to bring out that sense of calm that your body naturally can access. You talk about lavender, which happens to be one of my favorite fragrances. Is there a way to disengage from a hectic day at the office or your lifestyle? It doesn't have to be at the office. It could be just your lifestyle that can put you to sleep so that you can get a good night's sleep. Well, you bring up a great point, you know. We can set the stage for calm by putting in favorite rituals. One of my favorite rituals, and I suggest this in the Super Stress Solution book, is to use essential oils as you're taking a bath or a shower. I'll usually use a liquid soap with lavender oil as part of that uh, scent. And when I'm washing, the aroma of the lavender engages my, the system, the olfactory system, that's a system that engages smell. And this actually goes directly into the central command center where fear and calm are mediated, bringing a sense of calm. Some people like showers. I suggest they put one or two drops of lavender oil in their shower and let it vaporize. And that's a whole other way to set the stage for relaxation. I usually do this about a half an hour before I'm going to bed. And when I do that, it's sort of a signal to my body that I'm letting go of all the wear and tear that happened during the day. Should you put some drops of lavender on your pillowcase, or is that overdoing it? It turns out through research that we actually don't even have to have the awareness of the aroma to engage a relaxation response when we're using an essential oil. So for those who love the scent of lavender, 
uh, oil. They can certainly put it on a pillow or, or um, a little bouquet, but it's, it's not necessary. Some people can use a very small amount in a diffuser and let it vaporize over time. I know that um, couples often don't have the same appreciation for lavender scent, that you don't have to smell the lavender to elicit the relaxation response. So it depends what you like. Now you've done a lot of research in indigenous uh, countries about different plants. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I've been very intrigued with the power of plants. You know, plants have chemicals that they use to survive because they don't have legs, they can't run away. And so it turns out that many of the factors in plants, in botanicals, are actually uh, very active medicines. Um, many of the indigenous cultures have capitalized on this. Ayurveda is one example, Chinese medicine is another. And I put in a number of supplements and herbs that have relaxing properties for people who might not necessarily want to take medication. That having been said, and being a doctor, I'd like to suggest that if you're going to use supplements, even if they're over the counter, you want to work with your healthcare practitioner because sometimes these things can can alter the medications that you're taking, or they have medical effects all on their own. Even if you're not taking any medication, it's great to let your doctor know what's going on. How do you really apply it? Do you do it slowly? I mean, you said to check with the doctor, but do you do it slowly, or what's the best way to get into this? All you need to remember is if you put one or two things in your daily life that elicits that sense of calm, and, and put this in on a daily basis, you're going to get to that same state of beating super stress and enhancing your resilience against stress. My favorite two suggestions if you're going to do the limited plan is to build in the four or five breath on a daily basis, four breaths twice a day, and put a five minute break in the middle of your day. Because most people, when they're on the go, the last thing they feel that they have is a little time to slow down. But it turns out that your productivity and your creativity actually get enhanced when you give yourself a little break in the middle of the day. Five different types of super stress. Would you elaborate? As I've worked with hundreds of people engaged in the problems of super stress, I found that there are five typical reactions that people have to stress because, you know, we don't all react to things the same way. Some people get burned out and exhausted when they're chronically stressed. Others become emotionally oversensitive. Others have difficulty um, handling complex, you know, multitasking things. Some people be become controlling and quiet, and others become explosive. In other words, their tempers get out of control. Those are the five typical super stress types. And the reason why I made these types is that pictures are worth a thousand words. If you're trying to build an approach that's personalized, if you have a picture of how you react, it's a little easier for you to pick the things that are more effective for you to access calm. There's some really good foods that we should incorporate in our daily meal. Well, before I answer that question, I'd just like to say that whenever we have a stress response and that surge of adrenaline, norepinephrine, or, or cortisol, what we're doing is we're increasing the inflammatory response in the body. And if you have chronic stress, you can imagine that your inflammatory state is quite heightened. So I picked a diet that has anti-inflammatory activity, and that's the Mediterranean diet. What's good about that diet is it has omega-3 fatty acids. These are the essential oils that are found in, in cold water fish like salmon, tuna, herring, mackerel, and sardines. Or if you're a vegetarian, you can get this oil from flaxseed. That's one part of the Mediterranean diet that's positive. The second part is that it uses a lot of olive oil. Olive oil has some very powerful anti-inflammatory activity and so I use it as part of a salad oil dressing. I might use it if I'm lightly cooking something. Um, there's lots of fruits and vegetables in the Mediterranean diet. There's whole grains and um, there's not a lot of saturated fat in, in meats, in other words, red meats, or high-fat dairy. There are some superfoods that I think are, are really great to highlight. 
I don't know how you feel about chocolate, but I am a chocolate lover. And it turns out the dark chocolate, that is chocolate with cocoa mass that's 65% or higher, has a high antioxidant and mineral content, higher than blueberries, blackberries, and other fruits and vegetables that we know are good for us. So as a treat, I suggest a third of a bar of dark chocolate on a daily basis as a way to reduce inflammation and rise or, or bring out all the vitamins that we need. We overutilize this in the stress response. What kind of spices do you recommend on a daily basis or to incorporate into your meal? Spices that have very powerful medical influences. Uh, one of the ones that comes to mind is turmeric. You know, turmeric is one of the five spices that you find in curry. There was a study looking at Alzheimer's disease in India where people on the average consume about two grams of turmeric a day. They found that the percentage of, of the population uh, that had Alzheimer's was significantly lower than countries that didn't consume the turmeric on a, on a regular basis. So I encourage people to use recipes with uh, curry. I also love cinnamon. Cinnamon has um, blood sugar lowering properties. It has high antioxidant properties. That's the fruit and uh, the vitamins that we find in fruits and vegetables that are so beneficial and what we overutilize in the stress response. I've also suggested that coconut oil is a great oil if you're having trouble keeping weight on. It's a fat that's easily metabolized by the body and maybe a teaspoon of that in a, in a protein shake is very useful if you're trying to keep your weight up. Green tea is food that I think uh, we can use to our advantage. It turns out that there's an amino acid called L-theanine in green tea that is particularly relaxing. So for some people who like a supplement as an alternative to Calm, I'll suggest 100 milligrams of L-theanine about a half an hour before you go to bed. If you're gonna use this by drinking tea, what you wanna do is make sure you have a decaffeinated green tea beverage before you go to bed so you don't get kept up by the caffeine. What would you suggest as good physical activity once a day, five times a week, to get our heart going and maintain our weight level and reduce the stress? And the first kind of exercise that I like to suggest to people, because you don't have to go to a gym, is to walk. Um, walk in nature. Then you get a win-win a situation. You can use nature to help remind you visually of the greater good of, and beauty of nature uh, in our lives, as well as sort of get your body in a rhythm as you're getting your physical activity and using more calories and gain, getting fit. I had one woman who was 35 pounds overweight, and she was, a, was traveling. That was part of her career. She was always flying from one city to another. And what we did was we, I had her get a pedometer. And we decided that every time her flight was delayed between connections, instead of sitting there waiting, she would walk around the airport. By the end of a year, she actually lost those 35 pounds. So that just shows you that just walking alone is a very powerful way to, to get fit and to access calm. Tapes and DVDs for 10 minutes at a time to tone your abs, your abdomen, to tone the rest of your body, or um, perhaps use Pilates, which is a very good balancing kind of technique, to begin to engage physical activity without accessing the gym. Because I think most people are very, very busy, and you know, it, you'll lose almost an hour and a half every time you have to go to and fro from a gym. Whereas if you can just do 15 minutes of any intensive physical activity at home, you know, you've, you've already done something very significant for yourself. Dr. Lee, it's just wonderful learning about how we can unstress ourselves on a daily basis. In the closing moments of the show, what would you like to leave the audience with? Just remember one change at a time, like a breath exercise, and maybe a break in the middle of the day, is really the beginning of having uh, stress reduced in your life. Thank you so much for joining us today, Doctor. It's been fabulous learning about how to be stress-free as much as you can living in New York. If you have any questions for Dr. Lee or myself, please write us here at the Woman's Connection. We'd love to hear from you. Bye now.